Today I'm going to show you this concrete floor in my garage, uh, how I built it, um, why it's such an integrated part in the building performance, and if I was to do it again, uh, what I would do differently. After backfilling, I wanted to create a level surface to put the foam board on. So I marked a chalk line all the way around the perimeter uh, and got ready for flowable fill. Now this was advertised as self-leveling and uh, I even talked to the manager of the concrete company about this, but it was definitely not self-leveling. I had to jump in there immediately and uh, use a board to try to screw it out as best I could. Uh, and then as it dried, it got even worse. So bad so that I wound up chipping out all these high spots using my rotary hammer drill with a chisel point. It wound up being a hell of a lot of extra work. This is something I definitely would have done differently if I was to ever do it again. Uh, you can see all those high spots there that I, I had to chip. In order to correct the irregularities in the floor, I brought in five ton of mason sand, and then we used that to fill in the low points and we screeded it level. Uh, that finally provided a flat and level surface uh, of which we could lay down the foam. Now this is geofoam. It's a high density EPS foam. The foam board is laid down in a double layer and staircased. All the seams are offset from each other. Each layer is seven inches thick, totaling 14 inches of foam on the floor. This gives us a total R value of 56, which is huge. But the reason why I did this is because I'm putting in a radiant floor, and so the concrete slab is gonna be the hottest part of the entire building, and I don't want the heat bleeding down into the ground. The wall is two inch foam, which will be thickened later. It's secured using a power grab adhesive. I capped the foundation using Grace brand ice and water shield, which I ripped into three equal strips. This is 12 inch wide strips going on top of the two inch foam, the eight inch concrete, and then a two inch lap on the outside. This gives me something to adhere the vapor barrier to on the inside, something to tape the sheathing to on the outside, and it serves as a capillary break to keep moisture from the concrete wall coming into the sill plate. I wanted to hold the rebar up, so I was cutting all these pieces of PVC pipe, we take them in the bucket, and then we were zip tying them to the rebar. Uh, it did work as far as holding the rebar up in the concrete slab, uh, but in the future I probably would have changed this up a little bit. Here you can see taping the vapor barrier to that ice and water shield, which worked out awesome. I'm very happy with capping the foundation. I think it's a detail that should be done more often. Uh, this was building a curb. Uh, something I would do differently is I would have had the concrete wall uh, just built uh, to the height that I wanted the finished floor to. Uh, I was thinking of doing this because I was thinking of bringing the concrete in from the outside, but I wound up doing pavers. Uh, so it just was extra work. And you can see the rebar is going to be right in the middle of that concrete slab. Here the PEX tubing is going up through some electrical conduit 90s to protect it where it penetrates the slab. This is something I, I just would have done differently in general. In the future, I probably would have laid down six inch wire welded mesh, zip tied the PEX tubing to that, and then if I want a rebar, I could have laid it directly on top of the PEX at that point. Could have saved me a lot of work, although I'm not sure I would do the rebar again in the future anyways. And the guys uh, coming in with the concrete. Um, and I did hire out the floor here because it's, uh, I poured my own concrete floor, uh, for the house and it came out terrible. Uh, so definitely worth hiring a crew to, uh, level and screw the concrete floor. Now I did have them put it down level without a slope. And that's because this was primarily going to be used as a shop. If I was to do it again, I would have had a slope installed just where the cars are going to be on the outer portion, because in the winter, the snow does uh, puddle inside the garage. But there it is all done.